it's time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our lives, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey! What's up, everyone? Happy Monday, October 9th. Welcome to Power Hour Live. Look at this green going on, my friends. I think I opened Friday saying, holy green lantern, Batman, and we got a uh, back-to-back. Back-to-back green lantern. Don't see the old short squeeze set up uh, like this two days in a row very often. But here we are. Uh, today for zero DTE, so I've got a zero DTE duck, closed half of it at 20%. The other half is going to expire most likely up the beak for another 780. Had a AM ratio that, uh, hit 50%, closed half, and then got stopped out of the remaining piece. So that was a winner, uh, DKS hit both profit targets on that. That was a winner. Quiet lunch. Got stopped out for a loss. So, oh, and then I uh, I just not too long ago put on a little discretionary JSP with a few contracts. And that is uh, currently up a little bit. About 20%. Yeah, the old quiet lunch turned into a rock concert, I think, is what happened. So for Power Hour, obviously, we are up over 1% from where we opened. So in a um, short squeeze situation. So for Tranche 1, I'm going to be doing a 2 to 1 ratio. PM or power hour short squeeze tranche one. Yeah, so we'll be doing six, 16 by eight. So I need to buy some puts. And it looks like five wide, maybe. I got filled on one of my longs. Jumped up to 10 cents. I was trying to get filled at five. There we go. So it looks like the 4035s, if we hold here, I'll give it another minute. I probably would have done more JSPs, but I, I got long um, some just some uh, S and P futures. Actually, a little bit before the open today, I still have some open, so I already had kind of a long bias indication when I 
um, start of the day, so I didn't want to add too much to it, but uh, so I just did those few JSPs here. I, oh, I forgot I did. I did do the morning JSPs and I got stopped out of those after I reduced my stop. So that was a small, I think kind of almost scratched. It's a tiny loss. All right, five wide. Trying to get filled at 1070. Filled at 1070 on the 4035s. You had a thousand loss on the morning JSP. I I may have. I had I had it shared with another uh, strike on I think the DKS. So you might be right. It, it may have been a little bit worse than a scratch. All right, popping up to almost new highs on the day. And got out of two of my three JSPs at 50% on that little push up. So for tranche one, got in. Oh, it looks like I got filled some at 1060, some at 1070. So just call it uh, 10. Most of them are 1060. So 1060 times 0.6 equals six. So 635 is what I'm looking for on tranche one to reduce my stop. Put on a time fly this morning when the market was down and already had to adjust that one. So we've got two time flies on both with the calendar adjustment. Here's the October 20 position. It's already pushed up above the, uh, the call strike there. So I may look at pushing that one out here after I get through three tranches. And then the one I put on this morning is the October 27. And it pushed up, so I added the 4375 calendar. VXX, which is up big this morning, coming all the way back. Our first one, almost back to a scratch. And our November 17 vertical is up now, about 500. This is definitely helping our short premium. MES, we've adjusted this one a couple times. It's pretty well centered. QQQ. 
same thing. IWM, same thing. Uh, oil, big bounce, up 4%, kind of bouncing us back towards center. Our rut duck, which was coming down, got a nice bounce. That helped that one. Added a uh, added a call calendar in NDX. I wanted to go with a little bit bullish skew, so I used a call calendar. Just put that on today. Uh, we've got our SPX. It's pushing up to the upper upper edge, not upper edge, the upper quadrant. Call it. Hey Vegas, Michelle. Uh, how can you tell a short position doesn't have a bid? I just I just look at the option chain, right? So if you go out to the on the call side here, you're you know starting at the forty three seventy five. There are zero bids on those. So as as we get closer to the end of the day, those will start creeping closer and closer to at the money. And then, you know, depending on where our short strikes are, those could get to a position toward right towards the end where they don't have a bid. So I just I just look at the the option chain there. Yeah, that uh, volatility is increasing in oil. Look at USO the. Uh, uh, oil ETF. I know you don't have this tomorrow, but on the uh, IV indicator, you can see it implied volatility were really pushed up today in oil. Yeah, I would assume that has something to do something to do with the Israel conflict going on. Speaking of that, holy moly, that's terrible, man. I like I don't. I don't pay attention very closely to news just because it's, you know, usually so negative and so politically agenda driven, but I happen to be uh, watching some football and just scrolling through Twitter this weekend. Some of the videos that were posted on uh, Twitter were just gut wrenching. I mean, can you imagine just, you know, you're sitting there, and all of a sudden there's a surprise attack from like a militia terrorist group. And they're just, I mean, they're literally going around to civilians and ripping people out of their houses. Crazy. Uh, not a good thing. Not a good situation. Yeah, it's just, it's sick. It's sick, man. Sick, sick, sick. You know, and we, you know, a lot of us here, you know, I mean, we think of that as so far away, like that could never happen here, but ugh, I don't know. You know, when they're yelling death to Israel and death to America. Eh? Scary stuff. Yeah, personally, I feel... Uh, a little bit safer being on the inner inlands of the United States where I'm at. And if they showed up, you know, I live on six, 65 acres and I have an arsenal. So, <laughs> you know, those, you know, those like bookcases that I have a secret room behind them. You open it up and there's a secret room. We have one of those. 
I guess it's not so secret anymore since I just told all you guys about it, but you know what I mean? But I mean, gosh, I just, I don't know, man, that one, that kind of, that kind of got to me when I was watching those videos, just so bad. I mean, just, I just started kind of going into a daze, imagining people just going door to door, ripping, ripping, ripping people out of their house. That's just crazy. I usually don't, uh, usually don't get too emotional over the news, but for some reason that one. That one got me this weekend. All right. Still about almost 10 minutes until tranche two. I'm pretty sure they already have. They already declared war. Yeah, I'm going back and forth on that one, Meech. I am going to... I'm going to wait until after tranche three. I'll probably close the one that's down and uh, leave the profitable one open. Try to squeeze out a little bit more tomorrow. I just, I'm basing that on an assumption that we're going to continue higher. Put on a 1-2 DTE double calendar today. It's down a little bit. The 4-7 from Friday is up nicely. It's up about, looks like it's up about 15% or so. So I'm going to take that one off tomorrow morning. Yeah, Mara, once I got into, I didn't mention this on the little video I did, but once I, once we kind of got into short squeeze territory, you know, up a half percent and then up a percent, I was like, ah, I'm just going to let those run a little bit. We just sliced right through the upside expected move. Started the day with an expected move of about 27. Cut through that like a hot knife through butter.
still a few minutes before tranche two. Yeah, I would say, Mara, I saw your your comment about, you know, really, or just kind of your concern about Humpties. I would say, I mean, absolutely, but, you know, you want to obviously be cautious in position size, especially as you're just kind of working through those, but I certainly wouldn't discount them. I mean, look at, I think when you maybe started, you started close to uh, when, I don't know where, where you started, but VIX was probably in the 12, 13, 14 handle. And when you get a volatility kind of spike, like we've seen here, that's obviously going to be working against those, but, um, so anyway, take that into consideration. I've expect down to 17 and a half, just like that. All right, so tranche two. Buy some longs. By the way, I uh, posted in the trade plans channel. I just, I decided to just keep my trade plan the same as last month. Went back and forth on a few different little tweaks, but in the end, just decided to keep it as is. I just decided that um, on the three, two, I mean, you can kind of compare them side to side It the three, two improved the win rate, but reduced the Mar reduced the Kager. So I mean, it just wasn't, wasn't really an improvement enough for me to proceed. So I'm just sticking with old reliable. For tranche two, looks like we'll be five or 10 wide. Yeah, in fact, I was today when I was kind of just finalizing thing or, you know, getting ready to put it out and finalize it, I was kind of comparing them a little bit deeper and it was almost one of those things where I was like, what was I looking at before that I thought I wanted to change out? Um, I mean, obviously the win rate was a little bit better, but all the other metrics were slightly not as good as the one-to-one. -one. Like we may have the same strikes for tranche two, 40s and 35s. Tranche two, five wide. 585. Five eighty. 
Filled at 580 on the 4340 calls, 4335 puts. Uh, Kelvin, are you talking about on a day like today for short squeeze? Um, let's see. I don't remember exactly, but let's take a look while we are waiting. Let's just try like eight here. Uh, let's see. Minimum move up point five. So stop loss probably needs to go to like <clears throat> let's just try six and adjust it down to three. Not too shabby. What um, what do you guys use on your stops for two to one for tranche two? Six two. Mara, you trade a, a two to one for tranche two on a day like this? Forgot to look at the metrics here. Let me go back to this one. So we got one percentage 78 more nine. Three. So six hundred times eight. It's about forty eight hundred. OK, 
Okay, so this would put um, this would put my stop risk the same as my one to one. So as far as position size goes, so it's got a higher win rate, lower mar, lower drawdown. So, yeah, maybe I'll play around with it a little bit more, but not necessarily seeing anything that jumps out that makes me want to switch. All right, getting a little pullback in SPX. And it's time for tranche three. Yeah, tranche three looks like we should be able to get 10 wide. So a two to one, a two to one ratio always takes more buying power for sure. But I kind of ran into that on Friday where I, you know, I mean, I had over 200 K in free cash going into power hour in this account and was getting rejected for tranche three. <clears throat> I was doing a ratio on Friday something I always get messed up on the ratios. I think it's, I mean, I think it's me. I don't think it's to a toss thing, but I had a whole bunch of different things going on on that cycle. So either I confuse the margin department or I confuse myself one of the two. So it looks like the 40 fifties, if we hold here or excuse me, 40 thirties. Forty three forties, forty three thirties. Ten wide. 
can we get filled at 325? Filled at 325 on the 40 30s for tranche three. So we got a pretty tight little range here for the rest of the day, which means if price moves, that's no bueno. Price stays, it's more bueno. Right between 35 and 40 is my sweet spot. Um, yeah, I don't know the answer to that, Elliot. I, um, I mean, if I'm in a position to, uh, take it to the bell, I will. If I'm kind of on the edge, I won't. See, I almost, I almost kind of think the opposite on a day like this. I'm more, I would be more inclined to think there'd be a, another push into the end of the day. I totally get what you're saying as far as being, been a big day. People are going to be taking profits kind of like they did last week, right? Kind of sold off a tad at the end of the day, but, um, I don't know. My my uh my mentality would, would be a little bit the opposite. All right, for you PMMers, I'm going to close that one Humpty. Let's try to get out at 345, 340. Partial fill at 350.
tranche one. I'm looking for 635. It's currently trading at about 720, 710. Ah, got you, Marl. For tranche two, I got in it. I'm gonna get in tranche two at five eighty. So three fifty for tranche two. No, Murph Dog, I haven't I haven't found anything that makes me want to reduce my stop on tranche three as far as testing goes. Yeah, that guy was a piece of work. You didn't miss anything, Murph Dog. Just haters being haters. <laughs> I was patient. I feel, thank you. I, I feel like I was overly patient with that guy. Like I even I even got on a call with him, like a Zoom call, because I could tell he's he wasn't getting it and he was had this negative attitude. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna take some time, which I very rarely have the time to do. And uh yeah, he just he's just a he just loves to stir the pot. He just loves conflict, is what I figured out. All right, so I just closed my PMM Humpty. I'm going to post that here. I'll just put 360. I got filled a little bit at 350, but there we go. Yeah, it was Anoni Mouse. So he loves to have these anonymous names. He he changes it. He he got kicked out of Option Omega as well. He got he's just he's just toxic. Yeah, I would. I mean, I would try to. He would he would ask a question. I would try to point him towards a video or a lesson in a course and he just refused to watch anything. And he, I don't know what his deal is, but that's right. We all have issues. <laughs> just not that one. All right, change trading around forty three thirty three. <laughs> the funniest was he was trying to 
he was trying, he didn't know what a vertical spread was. He didn't know how to, ver- how a vertical worked. So I, I tried for <laughs> weeks to help him understand. And he just, he wanted to argue with me. Like, like dude, I, I, I think I know how, how a vertical spread works. I'm trying to, I'm trying to teach you, but just, <laughs> he just wanted to stir the pot. Right, getting a little pullback off the highs here. High today was 43.41, back to Well, then he, and then he tried to blackmail me. <laughs> he sent me, sent me these direct messages telling me if I pay him $500, he'll stop posting. Seriously, literally, I'll, I'll post a screenshot of it. He called, he called navigation trading Trump University, whatever that means. <laughs> I thought that was kind of a compliment, but. I don't know what that means. Well, that's what I was, I was like, man. There's the, there's the, uh, the DM. All right, boys and girls, we need a little bounce. Could use a little bounce. You pay me $500 and don't post in the gains and chains pains channel in uh, option strat. If you agree to those two terms, we're square. <laughs> square? I didn't know we were negotiating a hostage situation here. I don't, I don't submit. I'm like the U S we don't, we don't submit to a uh, hostage ransom blackmails. That's my policy. <laughs> yeah, that that fits Nick. <laughs> uh yeah, I would I would have done that, Elliot, for sure. <laughs> Twenty one minutes till the bell. I think he honestly, I think he goes on like a drinking bender or maybe cocaine bender. I don't know, because he'll go rapid fire for like several hours posting stuff. That's what he used to do when he was in this community, what he did in option strat. And then he'll go silent. (laughs) It's like passes out. You can't. Then he comes back on another rampage about 12 hours later. (laughs) 
All right, Mr. SPX, you've been kind of grinding lower enough. I think it's time for a little bounce back so we can reduce our stops. Tranche two is at 475. I need 350. Tranche one is at nine bucks. I need 635. So we need to bounce back up towards 30, 37 ish would do. The juice, let's see what the juice has to say. The first two early indications for the market on close and balance, 197 million, uh, 197 million sell side. So kind of anything under a couple billion is basically nothing. S and P is only up twenty three. Feels like ninety three. Nasdaq up sixty nine. Russell up nine. Dow up one sixty. Gold and silver higher. Notes and bonds higher. Ten year getting a little pullback. Hit a high of four point eight eight. Back down to four point six four. Oil up over four percent. Natty gas up one and a half. Natty gas has been on a little run. I don't know if we're expecting a cold winter or what's going on. Uh, Bitcoin back under 28,000. VIX hovering just under 18. Chris, are you asking about the previous day open high, low close? We have that on the, uh, are you talking about the current day? Uh, on toss, it's, it's always right up here on the top bar. I mean, it's not obviously marked on your chart, but. All right, coming up on 15 minutes till the bell, still trailing lower.
Tranche two trading at six and a half, stops at 880. Tranche one trading at 13 and a half, stop at 660. Tranche three trading at 3.3, .3, stop at 625. So not necessarily too close to stops, but do need a bounce here. Now you guys got stopped on tranche one. Yeah, I'm still about four bucks away. All right. I think you just needed to go down and touch 4330 before it creeps back up. That's where I have my defibrillators at. Am I right, Dick K? Good. So let's see, what do we got going on tomorrow? Tomorrow is Tuesday the 10th. We've got a couple of FOMC members speaking. FOMC member Waller, due to deliver a speech titled The Evolution of Monetary Policy. Whew. That's, if that doesn't get you fired up, I don't know what will. At the uh, at George Mason University, and we got Kashkari. That's at noon central. We've got Kashkari speaking at two p.m. central, right as Power Hour starts. Due to speak at a town hall hosted by is it Mina 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 Minot Minot State Minot State No. Minwa. <laughs> Somewhere in North Dakota. Why not? Okay. Why not state? Thank you. Didn't want to offend all of our North Dakotan members. Other than that, nothing really going on. And then, of course, Wednesday, PPI, pre-market. Thursday CPI pre market. Tranche three is down to a buck ninety. Tranche two down to four bucks. I'm looking for 350. Tranche two may get a reduction here pretty quick. So they get to 350. 
Reduce that to 550. Which one's trading back down to eight? I need 635 on that one. Three fifty. All right, there it is on Tron to two, reducing stop. See, that's all we needed, just that little baby bounce. Tron one's trading at seven forty. I need six thirty five. Yeah, we need a little bit more of a bounce. Don't don't stop there. Don't come back down. You saw tranche one hit 630. You got the same strikes. 30, uh, 40s and 35s, two to one. Well, it would be getting stopped out right now. If I reduced my stop. So I'm going to, I'm going to act like I didn't see it and see what happens here. Seven minutes till the bell. Now, if it gets back down there again, I will reduce my stop. I can't trust what Krish says, so that's why I didn't do it. Krish is very... He's not very trustworthy, that guy. He's a scam artist. <laughs> He's one of those scam artists that you that you read about. All right, 680. <laughs> I do believe you, Krish, but since I didn't see it with my own eyes, I have to uh I have to roll with it. See if I can get lucky. Miss out on that stop. 670. Six fifty. <laughs> Come on, little bouncy bounce. Getting down to five minutes here, which is uh, getting down into exit territory, but I'm going to hold for now. I think we bounce. Six seventy. Whoa, there we go. Reducing my stop. All right, nice little push up to 43.37 into the close. What do you guys say?
Tranche three, it's trading at 45 cents. I've got my order at 30 cents. Let's put that down to 20. Get a little greedy here. Tranche one trading at three fifty. Heart rate, 86. I just need something above 35 would be beautiful. Just above 35. Build on tranche three at 20 cents. Still have one JSP trying to get Phil at 50 cents. It's trading a little over a buck. So I'm on the 35.40 for both tranche one and two. So I need a little squeeze above 35. Two minutes. Just a little, uh, uh. Keep my orders in there. I've got tranche two at 55 cents. Well, we'll see. Tranche one, my limit's at 105. Let's bring that down to 20 cents. Get a little bounce. Filled at a bucko five on tranche one. Filled on my JSPs at 50 cents. I've got tranche two orders at 20 second, uh, 20 cents with 30 seconds to go. It's currently trading at 50, well, 80 cents. There it is. See if it can hit my 20 cents here. Oh, there's the bell. And pin, baby. <laughs> Just above 35. Sweet. So that was my, I think that's going to be my biggest power hour ever. Profit-wise. See what we got here.
So tranche one, I got in at call it 1065, some filled at 60, some at 70. So 1065, tranche one got out at 105. So nine, six, oh, those are two to one. Times eight. So 7,680 on tranche one. Tranche two got in at 580. Out at Where's my tranche two? Oh yeah, tranche two pinned. So that was a full winner. So 580 times 16, 9,280 for tranche two. And tranche three, I got in at 325, out at 20 cents. So 305 times 14. So 4,270 on tranche three. Two, eight, oh. Plus seven, six, eighty. 21,230. Minus the cost of the five and 10 cent longs. Sweet. Woo, beautiful. What a day. What a day. All right, my friends, good way to start the week, right? All right, so it's for tomorrow. Tomorrow is Tuesday the 10th. Yeah, so Chad streaming. Tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday in the morning, uh, we'll be back for power hour every day of the week. All right, my friends, have a great day. Have a great night. Cheers.